Hi guys, having understood what micro effects and macro effects actually are, let's apply those now. In this video, we're going to look at four very clearly macro topic areas, but I'm going to show you how easy it is, yes, to get the macro effects, no problem there, but also how easy it is to get the micro effects using what we learned in that video. Let's start by looking at free trade as a topic area. The macro effects of free trade are very clear. We can talk about comparative advantage exportation and benefits to the current account if we can export, but also impacts on the current account if we lose comparative advantages in many areas. We can talk about boosts in AD, higher X minus M, higher economic growth, lower unemployment, potentially demand pull inflation as well. We can talk about the impact on living standards and poverty alleviation from higher growth and higher incomes. Think about your East and Southeast Asian countries, which are very export dominant for growth and development. You can think about your Eurozone countries as well. We can talk about dynamic efficiency from trade, technology diffusion from trade, link that to LRAS, investment. But what about the micro effects of free trade? Well, we know free trade can result in lower prices, higher consumer surplus, higher quantity, higher choice, not just for consumers, but also for producers too, and how that can lower cost of production if they can source inputs cheaper from elsewhere in the world. We can talk about higher competition now because there is global competition with free trade and how that drives static efficiencies like allocative productive and x efficiency we can talk about better technology the micro impact of that lowering costs of production for firms we can talk about economies of scale benefits as now firms get bigger being able to access larger markets simple right simple and let's now look at supply side policies supply side policies are clear macro topic areas so the macro effects are very simple just go through lras we get higher growth lower unemployment especially lower the natural rate of unemployment, lower inflation, improvements in the current account if exports are now more competitive, but also there might be a hit to government finances linked to the budget deficit worsening, linked to the national debt rising if we go interventionist supply side policy. So macro effects simple, but even the micro effects are very simple if we dig into individual supply side policies. A lot of supply side policies can boost productivity, can go there. Uh, certain supply side policies, especially the market based supply side policies like deregulation, for example, like some of your labor reforms as supply side policies can harm stakeholders. Deregulation, where are the laws being cut or relaxed? Is it with environmental standards? Is it with health and safety standards? Is it with product safety standards? That can harm some key stakeholders. If we're talking about labor market reforms like re reduction in benefits, like abolishing minimum wages, like lowering the strength of unions, that can harm workers. Competition benefits of private privatization and of deregulation. We can talk about risk of monopoly power if those competition policies fail. We can get concentrated markets and the problems with those, definitely a micro effect. But also certain supply side policies can solve market failures. Government spending on education and training, government spending on healthcare, government spending on infrastructure can solve key public good market failures, key positive externality market failures. But also certain uh, supply side policies can result in market failures. We've talked about deregulation. We've talked about risk of monopoly power, of privatization, and of deregulation. So we can go both ways, clearly micro effects. Let's keep going. Now the micro and macro effects of economic growth. Let's go to macro effects first. With economic growth, we get higher incomes, therefore improvements in living standards and alleviation of poverty. We can talk about with higher economic growth, more jobs are created, labor is a derived demand, thus pushing down unemployment. If economic growth is coming from higher AD, we might get demand for inflation. We might get worsening of the current account position. Why? Because of the sucking in of imports as people are richer, but also with higher inflation exports being less competitive. We might get the improvement in government finances. Why? Because with higher economic growth, higher income tax revenues, corporation tax revenues, VAT revenues, tariff revenues, great, or macro effects. What about the micro effects? Well, with higher uncontrolled, unrestrained economic growth, environmental market failures, negative externalities in production there. Also potential worsening of income inequalities depending on where the growth has come from. We can question whether just higher growth, higher incomes is the only thing that will improve individual happiness. Focusing on individuals, households, makes it a micro stakeholder point. There is a lot more to individual happiness than just higher incomes. What about things like infrastructure improvements? What about things like gender equality, education improvements, health improvements, etc.? There is more to happiness than just an increase in income. So focus on the individual, make it a micro effect. We could talk about the individual impact on business profits, potential dynamic efficiency. That will be a good micro effect as well. What about FDI? The macro effects of FDI are very simple. You can go through AD and through LRAS and get the benefits of higher growth, lower unemployment linked to that, higher incomes, 
outcomes, poverty alleviation, better living standards, all of that can come from whether you shift AD right, whether you shift LRAS right and link to economic growth. Potentially, if AD is shifting right in the short run, we get demand pull inflation concerns. Uh, we get improvements in the balance of payments. Remember, FDI is a key balance in the financial account, but also then you can talk about the repatriation of profit and the impacts on the current account. We can talk about technology diffusion, so foreign firms coming in, bringing technology with them, spreading technology in the country they're operating in and therefore boosting LRAS. Uh, through that investment, we can talk about uh, the impact on government finances, at least in theory, these foreign firms coming in, making huge profits, the benefits to the government of high corporation tax revenues. What about the micro effects of FDI? Well, we can again focus on the environmental concerns, the negative externalities, the market failure, therefore, of resource depletion, of air pollution, etc. We can talk about how these foreign firms are treating their workers. Are they exploiting them with very poor conditions? Are they not giving things like maternity leave, paternity leave? Um, are they firing very quickly? Are they bringing their own workers and therefore hurting domestic workers and their welfare? Are they paying domestic workers very low wages? We can talk about dynamic efficiency in a micro context and talk about lower costs, higher productivity. We can even talk about potential reinvestment in green production, sustainable production there, absolutely. We can talk about potential competition distortion. So if foreign firms come in and destroy uh, existing firms in a developing country, let's say. But also we can talk about how foreign firms may come in and add to competition and give uh, competition benefits, more competitive outcomes and static efficiency benefits too. So simple stuff, guys. You can see how four major macro topic areas. Yeah, the macro effects are simple, but the micro effects are really simple too. Great practice. Hopefully you can do that on your own. You can see how easy this is. We're going to continue with more videos coming. I'll see you in those more micro and macro effects videos.